Hey, if you're only here to see the flags, then you can skip to these timestamps. Otherwise, enjoy. In 1971, the Aboriginal Australians designed a flag consisting of a black and red bicolor with a sun in the center, which was to be used by them to represent their ethnic groups. After a 24-year-long struggle, the flag was officially recognized by the Australian government in 1995. And if you really think about it, the only thing that Australia did here was approve of the usage of certain colors in a certain way, which doesn't seem too groundbreaking. But we, of course, know that this event is very significant, and that can tell us a lot about what we think of those little colorful cloths we know as flags. Pretty much everything has a flag nowadays, because it's one of the best tools to represent a community. This includes every country on Earth, whether it was through revolution, influence, or forceful diplomacy. This is really unprecedented, because never before in history has everyone come together to design a specific kind of symbol to represent themselves. At this point, states almost need a flag to function in society. So while it may seem that Australia just approved of a bunch of colors, that approval means a lot more to a lot of people. So naturally, I should start explaining all of them. Welcome back to the Vexillology volumes, where we put the ill in Vexillology. Yeah, I had you waiting there, didn't I? I can't just forget about the intro. So yeah, the origins of every national flag, where did they come from and why are they used? Now when I say origin, I don't mean symbolism, I already did that. While yes, colors do represent certain things, in all honesty, they don't have that much influence on where a flag came from. For example, the Indian government says that on their flag, the orange stands for courage and sacrifice, the white for peace and truth, and the green for faith and chivalry. But that's not really true. This flag was made for a completely different purpose, which I'll get into later, and the government changed its meaning when their political policy changed. It's not like India was one day like, okay, guys, we have this flag, but the tricolor isn't complete yet. We're a very chivalrous nation, so which color should we use to represent that? How about green? Since when does green stand for chivalry? Since I just said so. Genius, let's add it! No, that didn't happen. When France occupied the Saarland after World War II, they said that the colors stood for the districts, but the Germans saw the colors as a symbol of French domination. Symbolism is inherently political, so it doesn't actually matter what the white on Serbia's flag stands for. Don't look it up. And this is especially the case when a lot of flags were made in contests, where usually the design that looks the coolest gets chosen anyways, not because of any political motivation. Color symbolism will thus be taken with a pinch of salt. Actually, no, a mountain of salt. So with that intro out of the way, we're gonna have to start where every good story starts. The Dutch and the French. The tricolor is the most common type of flag in the world, and it originated in the Netherlands. The reason why its flag is a tricolor instead of an adaptation of the coat of arms like in many medieval states is because it's simple. It basically says that we're not all this, we're just this. Anybody can recognize it, anybody can draw it, anybody can craft it. It's a flag for the people. For example, Canada's old flag showed off the divisions between the English, Scottish, Irish, and French. But the maple leaf flag tells them, as well as all others, that they are Canadian. Same for the Dutch. So, when the endearingly named Water Beggars, or the Calvinist Christians who were driven off the mainland by Spain, saw the leader of their uprising wearing an orange-white-blue uniform, blue for the House of Nassau and orange for the orange branch in the House of Nassau, they took it as their own, since something as simple as that is a lot more recognizable at sea than this shit. And then the 80 Years' War happened. Okay, it may be a little weird to gloss over that of all things, but it's not important and we don't have time. Later on, orange changed to red because the state's general with their red flag said so, and also because orange dye was harder to come across than red ones. And that's why the Dutch have a tricolor. But it wouldn't rise to prominence until word got out to the French. Doing away with the flag of the kingdom during the French Revolution, they wanted a flag resembling that of Paris, where the revolt initially broke out. The Parisian blue and red was combined with white, supposedly standing for France itself, because it was the color of the battle standard used by Joan of Arc. We don't actually know exactly what it looked like, but many have interpreted it. This is a little stupid considering the white actually stood for the French monarchy, which they opposed, but hey, let's not let bullshit distract from having a good looking flag. But of course, it's not just a coincidence that the French flag looks so similar to the Dutch one. France saw the Dutch tricolor as a symbol of revolution and republicanism, and that idea of independence is why so many flags today are tricolors. The only difference is its verticality, which makes it easy to distinguish where the Dutch had influence and where the French had influence. And with this, the foundation of the modern flag was laid. So let's get back on track. I'm gonna go in order of this Wikipedia article, more specifically the first use of flag design column, because all the other orders that have tried to end up being a coloring mess, so this'll have to do. 
The only objective metric we have to define a nation is the 192 UN member states. But I'm gonna add these 8 as well so that I can say 200 in the thumbnail. So here is every national flag explained, except for the Netherlands and France because we already did that. Here we go. Japan. In Japanese tradition, the sun goddess Amaterasu founded the country in the 7th century BC, so Japan likes displaying symbols of the sun. The reason why it's the first one here is because in 701, the emperor used flags displaying the sun in court. Whether this is true or not, their modern flag was first used in 1854, when the United States forced Japan to get a flag so that they could participate in commerce and distinguish their ships from others. Denmark. In Danish tradition, the flag fell from heaven in 1219 as a sign from God and his approval for the fight against pagan Estonians. However, a white cross was used by many states in the Holy Roman Empire due to it being the war flag of that empire as they fought for Christianity, and it must have rubbed off on Denmark. The reason why the cross is off-center is because the Danish version was a swallowtail flag used for war, which became rectangular in 1854 when it was given to the people as well. Austria. Even though this is a tricolor, it wasn't actually inspired by France. Instead, it came from the coat of arms of the House of Babenberg, which ruled Austria until 1246 when it became extinct, and the colors were taken over by the Habsburgs and used ever since. Latvia. This one also wasn't inspired by France. The legend says that in 1279, a chief of the Latgalia was wounded and laid on a white cloth, which got covered in blood except where he was laying, which remained white. This is also similar to an Austrian legend, so it's likely not true, but the legend was the actual inspiration for its design in 1921. That's not that bullshit distracts from having a good looking flag. Georgia. In 1367, some guys made a map which displayed the then Kingdom of Georgia with this flag, supposedly based off of a Jerusalem cross. So when Georgia regained independence in 1991, this flag became the symbol of the movement. Albania. In 1443, the Albanians resisted Ottoman occupation with this flag, the double-headed eagle being borrowed from the Byzantine Empire, who borrowed it from the Romans. So yes, Albania has a claim to be the third Rome. The flag was restored with their independence in 1912. Switzerland. Just like Denmark, it's based on the war flag of the HRE. The first time the cross was put in the center was when they fought in the Burgundian Wars of the 1470s. Wales. The dragon was adopted from the Anglo-Saxons who invaded Celtic Britain after the fall of Rome. It was made to be red to contrast their white dragon and was featured on Welsh flags as early as that of Gwynedd. The green and white were taken from the livery colors of the reigning Tudor king in 1485, livery being a sort of uniform. Sweden. It was inspired by the Danish, but with the colors of their coat of arms instead. Tonga. It's based on a British red ensign who colonized the islands and converted them to Christianity, so they replaced the Union Jack with a cross. Russia. Peter the Great wanted Russia to become more European and also be able to challenge the navy of Sweden, so he went to the Netherlands and after studying ships there, also copied their flag and changed the colors around. Nepal. Triangular flags were popular in Southern Asia due to their compactness, but most of them disappeared after Britain conquered India. Nepal was there to stay though, including the sun and moon in the hopes that Nepal will last as long as them. Liechtenstein. Just like Wales, the colors came from the livery colors of their ruler in 1764, who was a this nerd. They added a crown when they realized that Haiti had the exact same flag in the 1936 Olympic Games. No, that is not a joke. United States. When the American Revolution began in 1775, the colonies made this flag, commonly known as the Continental Colors, standing for the British and the 13 stripes for the 13 colonies. They replaced the Union Jack with stars standing for the same thing. Then they kept adding stars for every state until 1960 when Hawaii became the 50th state. Spain. Spanish flags were dominantly white until they wanted one with distinct colors to recognize their own ships at sea, which is why yellow and red were chosen. It eventually became popular not only at sea and became the national flag in 1843. It also had its coat of arms on it, standing for Castile Leon. Aragon, Avar, and Granada. Turkey. It's the same flag that was used by the Ottoman Empire since 1793, who took the star and crescent from the Byzantines. And because of that, it's now often seen as a symbol of Islam. The red light came from the monocolor banners of the Central Asian nomadic Turks. Italy. It's directly based on the French flag. 
just replacing the blue with green taken from the urban militia of Milan during the Napoleonic Wars. San Marino. The white and blue were also inspired by France, and its coat of arms standing for its fortifications is in the middle. United Kingdom. A combination of three flags, England's St. George's Cross from their participation in the Crusades, Scotland's St. Andrew's Cross, which is one of the standard divisions of shields in heraldry, made blue to be distinguished from England, and Ireland's St. Patrick's Cross, coming from the shield of the Fitzgerald dynasty. Haiti. Inspired by France by getting rid of the white for monarchy, later they added the coat of arms with all their weapons standing for independence. Vatican City. The white and gold flex the fact that the Pope is powerful enough to break the rule of tincture, while the coat of arms uses keys representing the metaphorical keys to heaven given to St. Peter by Jesus, and the Pope hat. Ecuador. The colors are from the flag of Gran Colombia, which they were a part of before independence. The coat of arms represents its location. Colombia. Same, but without the coat of arms. Although a bit more about Gran Colombia, the tricolor wasn't based off of France, but Argentina. Venezuela. Also same, with eight stars standing for the eight provinces. Argentina. The tricolor was definitely influenced by France and Spain, but the origin of the colors are uncertain. What we do know is that they definitely wanted them to be different from Spain. So yeah, Spain made a flag to be distinct from France and Argentina made a flag to be distinct from Spain, which just made it look like France again. Lovely. The Son of May was added later, which represents the Incan sun god Inti and the revolution happened in May. Chile. The colors are based on the flag of the transition which was used during the independence war, which was inspired by France and Argentina. It was changed because it was too similar to the Dutch, adding a star standing for progress. Norway. Another Nordic cross based on Denmark, designed when they were under Sweden and was made to be distinct from them. So yeah, Sweden designed theirs to be distinct from Denmark, Norway designed theirs to be distinct from Sweden, which in turn just made it… yeah. Mexico. It's a tricolor based on France, with their coat of arms representing the founding of the Aztec Tenochtitlan, now Mexico City. Peru. Peru had a flag inspired by Argentina with the Son of May, but since it resembled Spain too much, they flipped it. The state flag also has a coat of arms on it. El Salvador. Argentina's flag was also an inspiration to the Central American Republic, which broke down into five countries to use similar flags to honor it. El Salvador is one of these. Greece. Greece has a cross for the Orthodox faith, and adopted this flag in 1822 as their naval ensign because it's wavy, which later replaced the national flag. Honduras. Same as El Salvador. Also honoring the five countries of the Union with the five stars. Nicaragua, same. Tunisia, Arab flags are usually monocolored, so its naval flag was just red until they needed to distinguish themselves, so they took inspiration from the Ottoman Empire. Uruguay, a combination of Argentina scholars and son of May, with the US stripes for the original nine departments. Belgium, French tricolor with the colors taken from the coat of arms of Brabant. Poland, the colors were taken from the coat of arms, which were likely chosen in the 13th century to be distinct from the gold and black HRE. Serbia, inspired by Russia's flag and includes their coat of arms. It started a trend of other flags to copy Russia, creating the Pan-Slavic flags. Paraguay, French-inspired tricolor with the coat of arms on one side and a seal of treasury on the other. Dominican Republic, based on Haiti's colors with the cross standing for Christianity, as well as their coat of arms. Luxembourg, a Dutch tricolor with the colors taken from the coat of arms of Luxembourg. Liberia, heavily based off of the US, with just one star standing for independence. Costa Rica, same as El Salvador, but with a red stripe added because France. Ireland, French tricolor with green based on the flag of Leinster and orange based on the House of Orange, coming from the period of time when the Dutch and British were United. I will say though that the government issued meaning, which is usually propaganda, of peace between Catholics and Protestants also makes some amount of sense here. Croatia, like Serbia, inspired by Russia, with their coat of arms on it as well. Slovenia, same. Ukraine, the colors were first used during the 1848 revolutions during protests in Lviv, whose coat of arms was blue and yellow. Slovakia, same as Serbia. Hungary, French tricolor with colors taken from the old flags of the Kingdom of Hungary. Germany, this is one of the most debated flags out there, so excuse me if I don't get everything right. The Lutso of Free Corps wore uniforms of black, red, and gold in Prussia's army when fighting against Napoleonic France. A student fraternity in Jena made this flag from those colors, hoping for a unified Germany after the war. So when the German Confederation was established, the colors became a symbol of resistance. Bolivia. This tricolor was probably inspired by Colombia instead of France, Argentina, or Spain. The state flag also has a coat of arms in the middle. Finland. A Nordic cross representing nature because they wanted something completely different from Denmark or Sweden. Andorra. French tricolor with colors inspired by Aragon and its coat of arms in the middle. Romania. French tricolor with colors taken from the coat of arms of Moldavia, Guatemala, same as El Salvador. Cuba, just like the US and Uruguay, its stripes represent its departments, with the star for independence like Liberia. Triangles are symbols of equality in masonry. New Zealand, a British Union Jack in the corner with five stars in the shape of the Southern Cross, a constellation that's easy to see in the Southern Hemisphere. Bulgaria, based on Russia with green replacing blue in order to stand out. Monaco, colors were taken from their coat of arms. Indonesia, colors were taken from the Mayapa hit empire. South Korea, when Japan got bullied into getting a flag, they in turn bullied Korea into getting a flag. The middle symbol is the...
I'm not even gonna try pronouncing that, which represents the duality and balance of the universe. Surrounding it are the trigrams representing heaven, moon, earth, and sun. Estonia, tricolor inspired by nature. Brazil, green for the house of Braganza, yellow for the house of Habsburg, blue and white for Portugal, their model in the middle of the blue circle with a bunch of stars representing the sky over Rio de Janeiro, which includes the constellations of Canis Minor, Canis Maior, Carina, Virgo, which is above the model because it represents their territory above the equator, Hydra, the Southern Cross, Octantis, Triangulum Austral, and Scorpius. Damn you, Brazil! Why does it have to be so complicated? Israel. The colors were taken from some guy who wrote a poem, and in the middle is the Star of David, which is a symbol in Judaism. Philippines. Likely inspired by Cuba with its colors and Mason Triangle. There's a sun with eight rays standing for the original revolting provinces, and three stars representing the three main islands of Luzon, Visayan, and Mindanao. Australia. Same as New Zealand. Panama. The flag was heavily influenced by the United States, who sponsored their independence, and the colors are based off of the political parties. Brunei. The Bruneian Sultanate had a flag that was just yellow, because it was their symbol for royalty. The British added two tribes standing for the chief ministers who now also ruled the country, and after independence the coat of arms was slapped onto it as well. Portugal Portuguese flags have always been white and blue, but when the monarchy was overthrown they took the colors of the Portuguese Republican Party. They then added the coat of arms, as well as an armillary sphere standing for the Portuguese explorations and discoveries during the Age of Exploration. During the Age of Exploration? During the age of exploration. 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 <gasps> During the age of exploration, many explorers of the world were spreading different kinds of new lands on the map. Ah, oh, that sentence really brings me back to the good times when I was alive and not dead. Wait, Green Horde? You're still supposed to be in my imagination, not exist. Alright, whatever. Tell me, where am I? Wow, technology! Okay. I mean, I would be happy, but you seem to have trapped me in a glass cage, so I'm not exactly hopeful of what will happen next. Huh. Damn it, I shouldn't have skipped ball day. Oof, sorry, I got some hallucinations there. Anyways, let's continue with the flag of Morocco. Oh man, I sound like that? Morocco. Just like with Tunisia, Arab flags are usually just one color. So when the French colonized them, they added the Seal of Solomon, a symbol of every Abrahamic religion which is also where the Star of David came from. It might also reference the flag of the previous Marinid dynasty. Thailand. Just like Japan and Korea, they were bullied by the West to create a modern flag, and they settled on this in 1917, trying to resemble the Triple Entente and the US who they were allied to in World War One. Jordan. The flag is based on the flag of the Arab revolt against the Ottoman Empire during World War One, and Transjordan added a star representing unity. But these colors became known as Pan-Arab colors and are set to stand for the various caliphates. Lithuania. Lithuania didn't want to revert back to their red middle age flag because it resembled the flags of the communists who were trying to occupy them too much, so they made a tricolor representing Lithuanian traditions. Iceland. They created their own Nordic cross flag with blue and white, but since they were under Denmark they added red to it as well. Armenia. After the Crusades, the Crusaders established the Armenian Kingdom of Cilicia, which was ruled by the Hathamid dynasty, and the colors of its coat of arms are the same as those in Armenia's flag. The House of the Signor, which is in control of Cyprus and Jerusalem, took over Cilicia and added the Hathamid shield to its own which is where Armenia got its inspiration. Azerbaijan. They chose traditional Turkic colors for their tricolor, and they also followed Turkey and Tunisia in adding a star and crescent. Czechia. The white and red come from the coat of arms of Bohemia, but that would be the exact same as Poland, so blue was added standing for Slovakia because it was adopted when Czechoslovakia was a thing. But now Czechia doesn't even own Slovakia anymore. But hey, that's not that bullshit to distract from having a good looking flag. Taiwan. The Chinese Nationalist Party, also known as the Kuomintang, has a white sun on a blue background, which is put in the canton of their flag. Red came from the flag of the Bayan government, where it stood for the Han Chinese peoples. India. The flag is a leftover of when everyone expected the Indian subcontinent to be united, with the orange standing for Hindus and the green for Muslims. In the center is an Ashoka Chakra, a type of spinning wheel associated with Buddhism. Fiji. Like New Zealand, but with its coat of arms instead of the Southern Cross. Maldives. They were another country with a monocolor flag, but when global came, the Maldives added green, a prominent color in Islam, as well as a crescent. Saudi Arabia, a green background for Islam with the Shahada, the first pillar of Islam used to declare their devotion to the faith. Weapons on flags is usually a statement saying that they will defend their country, which is also why it's called coat of arms. It's the same on this flag. Bahrain, Britain had problems with piracy in the Persian Gulf, so they wanted all ships friendly to Britain to have a white band on the side. Bahrain also added five triangles standing for the five pillars of Islam. Algeria, the crescent is as usual a symbol of Islam, and the colors come from the pan-Arab flag also used by Jordan. Vietnam, obviously very much inspired by the flag of the Soviet Union, but 
not China, since it was already created in 1940 when they revolted against France. Mongolia. This one was also influenced by the Soviets, but when communism retreated, they got rid of the star on top of the Suyombo symbol, which is a symbol used in the Suyombo script to mark the start and end of a piece of text. Lebanon. French tricolor with Lebanese cheddar tree, a symbol of strength often mentioned in the Bible. Malta. The colors come from the banners of the Knights of Malta and Knights Hospitalier, which were Christian military orders in the Kingdom of Jerusalem during the Crusades. The George Cross was given to Malta by the British after the 1942 siege of Malta for their bravery. Laos. Laos also had a simple flag until they got bullied into changing it. They decided to do the same thing as Thailand, but adding a white disc representing unity instead of a stripe. Although it could also be a simplified version of their original three-headed elephant, or a nod to Japan who helped them achieve independence. Don't ask how. Bhutan. The colors and dragon are both symbols in traditional Bhutanese mythology, but the dragon was also likely inspired by China. Pakistan. Same as Algeria, although it's not Pan-Arab. The colors came from the flag of the All India Muslim League that was created in 1906 for Muslim interests in India. North Korea. Influenced by the Soviet Union. If I'm not going to believe what governments say that the colors on their flags stand for, then I'm definitely not going to believe North Korea. Let's just say that the blue stands for Kim Il-sung's balls. Samoa. Based on New Zealand's flag who governed it after World War One, with the Southern Cross being moved to the Canton. Sri Lanka. It's said that in the 5th century BC, the founder of Sri Lanka came to the island with the flag of a lion, which became the symbol of the Sinhalese of the island. Later, green for Muslims and orange for Hindus was added, and even later some leaves which are symbols in Buddhism. Cambodia. France designed a flag for them when they were a protectorate under them, and they turned it into a tricolor upon their independence. The middle building is the Angkor Wat, the biggest religious monument in the world, and a temple for Buddhism. Qatar. Same as Bahrain. China. As usual, influenced by the Soviets, and the red also came from the aforementioned Bayan government standing for the Han Chinese. There are five stars in the top left because five is an important number in Chinese symbolism. Same for the Bayan government. Malaysia. It's really like a combination of its neighbors. Yellow is the color of royalty like Brunei. It resembles the flag of Mayapahit and Thailand. It's got a star and crescent for Islam and stripes for its departments. Belarus. This flag was made during their time as a Soviet Socialist Republic, when every SSR got a different stripe to distinguish themselves. Now, this is all conjecture, but I think the green stripe might be a nod to Lithuania, since they were ruled by them in the Middle Ages, combined with them in an SSR for a while, and also also got a green stripe to their previous green on the tricolor. Unfortunately though, I don't really have sources to back that up, and I guess it could also have been made to be distinct since they were also a UN member. The white pattern is a rushnik, which is a decorative and religious cloth. Libya. The colors come from the pan-Arab flag like Jordan, and it's got a crescent and star as well. The black might also come from the Senussi dynasty, who ruled over some Libyan areas when fighting against colonialism. Yemen. A simple pan-Arab tricolor. Egypt. Same, but with the eagle of Saladin. Saladin being the first caliph of the Abbasids, who recaptured Jerusalem after the Crusades. Somalia. It's heavily based on the United Nations flag, since it had a big role in aiding Somalia's unification and independence. The star refers to Somalia itself. Ghana. Okay, so stay with me here because this is going to be a long one. The colors of this flag are based on Ethiopia, who has not been mentioned yet and won't be for a while, because they had a big flag change relatively recently, so that's a little bit awkward. This is why I'm vetoing Ethiopia to be talked about right now. Ethiopia already had the green, yellow, and red colors since like 1270, but the tricolor gained influence when the French and Italians set themselves up around them. Then Italy tried to conquer them and failed. Because of this, many African nations who gained independence during decolonization looked up to Ethiopia, so they made their own tricolors with the Ethiopian colors, which are now known as Pan-African colors. The reason why they're not on the list yet is because they added an emblem standing for equality, because the country is ethnically divided, which is why it's a major change. Alongside this Pan-African flag, there is another Pan-African flag known as the Marcus Garvey flag, which is mostly used by countries in the Americas who have large African populations due to the slave trade, but some countries in Africa do use these colors as well. Mark over here also made a shipping line known as the Black Star Line, which helped African countries with transporting their goods. Its symbol was the Black Star of Africa, which is also incorporated into many different flags. So with me? No? Great. Back to Ghana. It's a pan-African tricolor with the Black Star of Africa. The next couple of flags resemble each other a lot, so let's go into Overdrive. Cameroon. Pan-African tricolor with a star for unity. Madagascar. Colors taken from the Kingdom of Marina. Guinea. Pan-African tricolor. Central African Republic. Pan-African tricolor mixed with French tricolor with star for independence. Niger. French tricolor with a sun. Syria. Pan-Arab tricolor with two stars standing for Syria and Egypt as a leftover from the days of the United Arab Republic. Chad. Pan-African tricolor combined with French tricolor. Benin. Pan-African colors. Ivory coast, French tricolor inspired by nature, Singapore, colors influenced by its neighbors, including an Islamic crescent and multiple stars to be distinct from Malaysia, Gabon, French tricolor inspired by nature, Senegal, Pan-African tricolor with star for Islam, Nigeria, tricolor inspired by nature, Mali, Pan-African tricolor, Republic of the Congo, Pan-African colors, Togo, Pan-African colors with a star for hope, Cyprus, a map of the country and an olive reed
Breathe for Peace, Sierra Leone, Tricolor Inspired by Nature, Kuwait, Pan Arab Tricolor, Jamaica, Pan African Colors with a Saltire because the original looked too much like Tanganyika. Also, kinda started a trend where Caribbean countries made unique designs that don't actually stand for anything. For example, Trinidad and Tobago, Pan African Colors, Uganda, Pan African Colors with Bird introduced by the British, Burundi, Pan African Colors with White Saltire for Peace maybe taken from Belgium's Cross of Burgundy, and three stars for the main ethnic groups or the national motto. Kenya, Pan African Tricolor with a Maasai Shield. The former is a large ethnic group in the country and the latter shows that they will defend their country just like Saudi Arabia. Democratic Republic of the Congo. The blue and a star came from the flag of the Congo, not so free state, while the red and yellow band stands for their independence. Iraq. Pan Arab tricolor with a takbir written in the middle, which is an expression of the faith commonly used in prayer. Tanzania. Combination of Tanganyika's and Zanzibar's flags, both being Pan African tricolors. Zambia. Pan African kind of tricolor, but not really, with another bird that they got from the British. Malawi. Pan African tricolor with a stun for hope. Gambia. Tricolor inspired by nature. Canada. French tricolor with a plant that they got from the British. Micronesia. Just like Somalia, it was inspired by the UN, with four stars representing its four island groups. Botswana. Bicolor with vibration inspired by nature. Also probably made to be the same from South Africa's old flag because apartheid does what Zambia and Uganda do but instead transforms the national animal into colors. The zebra wasn't introduced by the British though. Barbados. Tricolor inspired by nature. With trident of Poseidon because they're surrounded by water. It's cut off because it's independent. Guyana. Pan-African colors designed by the myth, the legend, Whitney Smith himself. Antigua and Barbuda. Just nature. But there's also a V in there standing for victory. Oh hey, Colorado effect. Didn't see you there. St. Lucia. Nature. Nauru. Nature. The strip is the equator and the star is Nauru's location below it. Mauritius. Doesn't actually have anything special besides what the government says about the colors. It just looks cool. That's all that matters. Esfatini. The tricolor was arbitrarily designed when they needed the flag to assist in the invasion of Italy during World War II. The Naguni shield was added later and has the same meaning as the one on Kenya's flag. Sudan. Pan Arab tricolor. Oman. Islamic colors with a national emblem in the top left, which is a conjured dagger in its sheath on top of two swords, which are weapons used by Oman. United Arab Emirates. Pan Arab tricolor. Bangladesh. The usual Islamic green and bloodshed red with the sun for the future. Papua New Guinea. Locally artistic colors with a southern cross and a bird of paradise, the national animal. Equatorial Guinea. Pan Arab African colors combined with colors inspired by nature, and the coat of arms in the middle. Bahamas, tricolor inspired by nature. Guinea-Bissau, Pan-African colors with black star of Africa. Grenada, Pan-African colors with colors inspired by nature, along with six stars on the border standing for its apartments, and nutmeg, which is common on the island. Sao Tome and Principe, Pan-African tricolor with two black stars of Africa for Sao Tome and Principe respectively. Angola, Pan-African colors with a gear for industry, a machete for defense, and a star for progress. It's shaped like a hammer and sickle, which is a leftover from the days of communism. Suriname, Pan-African colors with a star for unity. Mozambique, Mozambique. Colors based on the Mozambican Liberation Front body, which helped it achieve independence, along with a rifle for defense, a hoe for agriculture, and a book for education. Even though you can just have those be represented by red and green, but whatever, that's not that bullshit as fact from having a good looking flag. Timor Leste. Colors emphasizing colonialism, which is what the Pan African flags kinda already do, but whatever. Also a star for hope. Western Sahara. Pan Arab tricolor with crescents. Djibouti. Takes their colors from the guerrilla group who got them independent, known as the Front de la Libération de la Côte de Somalie, with the colors representing the nationalities and a star for unity. Solomon Island. Colors inspired by nature with five stars for the original five departments. Dominica. Colors inspired by nature and ethnicities. A cross for Christianity, ten stars for the ten departments, and another bird that those damn British gave them. Speaking of British, Tuvalu, a Union Jack in the Canton, and all the stars for the islands and atolls in that order. Marshall Islands. Like Nauru, but they're actually above the equator. And I guess they also didn't get the memo that the equator is not oblique. But hey, that's not that bullshit, you know the real. Kiribati. Just copied from the coat of arms that the British gave them. Nature. Vanuatu. The yellow line is in a Y shape, representing the layout of the islands on a map. It's got a board tusk with two leaves in it that are similar to the leaves of an olive branch. So peace. Iran. Islamic colors with the takbir like Iraq written all over, and the center emblem is supposed to be a stylized version of the word Allah in Arabic. Yeah, I guess I can see it. Opponents to the Iranian government, like me, use this flag with a lion and sun, a symbol of Shia Islam. Zimbabwe. Pan-African colors with a star for socialism and a bird that wasn't given to them by the British. Instead, coming from the coat of arms of the old kingdom of Zimbabwe. Palau. Blue for the ocean and yellow for the bright celestial body, which is the... Moon. Yeah, I was surprised as well. The moon is actually much more important than the sun in Palauan culture. St. Kitts and Nevis. Pan African colors with two stars standing for St. Kitts and Nevis, respectively. Burkina Faso. Pan African colors with star for progress. Greenland. Technically inspired by nature, but apparently the red stands for the ocean. I don't think the creator has ever seen the ocean, but I digress. The colors were likely inspired by Denmark because they are both in the Danish realm. The disc in the middle is counterchanged to make it look like the sun below the horizon. St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Tricolor inspired by nature with diamonds because it's the gem of the Antilles. Uh, I don't know why they say that, there aren't any sources, but you know what they say, LNLBDF, HAGF.
It's in a V shape, which stands for Vincent. Yes, hello, Colorado, I know. Palestine, Panera Tricolor, Namibia. Color is based on the Southwest Africa People's Organization, which helped it gain independence. Also, a sun for life. Moldova, tricolor based on Romania, with coat of arms in the middle. Uzbekistan, a tricolor with 12 stars representing the months and zodiacs. Looking back towards the technological developments in Middle Age Uzbekistan. The way the stars are arranged is a visual representation of the word Allah in Arabic. Yeah, I can kind of see it. Turkmenistan, it's got the usual Islamic stuff we've already heard of, but wow, that sure is complicated. It's a collection of five different kinds of carpets that are traditionally created in the country, representing the five major tribes. But then there's also an olive wreath in there for good measure. Kyrgyzstan. The middle symbol has two parts. The red and the sun are a reference to a national hero known as Manas, who united 40 tribes equating to 40 sun rays to fight against the Mongols. The middle disc is a stylized version of the top of a yurt, which is a sort of tent. Its design would be the first thing you'd see when making up in one of these. Kazakhstan. The blue color and general design comes from the flag of the Kazakh Khanate, while the sun and eagle stand for freedom, since the steppe eagle is a common sight in Kazakhstan. Down. The pattern on the left is known as the Koshkar Muais, and was likely inspired by Belarus because of their common ties to the Soviet Union. It stands for the horns of a ram. Cape Verde, 10 stars for the islands with a red and white line for progress. Tajikistan, they copied Iran's color scheme upon independence due to their close cultural ties. In the middle is a crown standing for the Samanid dynasty, as well as 7 stars because 7 is an important number in Persian mythology. Eritrea, Pan African colors alongside blue and an olive wreath, which is a nod to the United Nations. South Africa, combination of the colors of Transvaal and the African National Congress Party, which ended apartheid in the Country. It's shaped like a Y for progress. North Macedonia. They wanted to take the Virginia sun flag that Alexander the Great flew over his empire in the 4th century BC, but Greece pressured them into making it a little different, just like the name. Seychelles. It's not a combination of Romania and Hungary, but a combination of two parties, United Seychelles and the Seychelles Democratic Party, both of which are now irrelevant. But hey, that's not that bullshit distracting having a good looking flag. And boy, what a good looking flag it is. Somaliland. There isn't a lot of info on this flag because many people don't care about Somaliland, so I'm just gonna go out on a limb here. The usual pen Arab colors with the Shahada like Saudi Arabia on top and the Black Star of Africa in the middle. Bosnia and Herzegovina. I actually really like this one. It's from reference to their old flag, with the band becoming a triangle to represent the Bosniaks, Serbs, and Croats, and the stars in background represent their hopes of joining the European Union. Rwanda, a tricolor with the sun for enlightenment. But it doesn't really matter because the real reason why this flag exists is because they needed to change the previous one that got associated with the Rwandan genocide. New Year, new me. Comoros, a crescent with four stars for the four islands, because believe it or not, they claim French Mayotte. Same thing with the stripes. Montenegro, they wanted to stand out from the rest of the pan Slavs, so they took a war flag that they used in the Russo Turkish War of 1877 and made its new color scheme. In the center is its coat of arms, another Byzantine double headed eagle. South Sudan, pan African colors, probably made to resemble Kenya, but with some blue and a star to differentiate. Oh, you thought we were gonna be done after the newest country? Oh, no, no, no. Flags are dynamic, my friend. It's time for the final five. The final stretch. Lesotho. Tricolor with a Mokorotl straw hat in the center. Kosovo. Kinda like Cyprus, but Kosovo made damn sure to choose a flag that represents Europe and multiple ethnicities instead of just going full Albanian. Myanmar. Japan occupied Burma and gave them a tricolor to inspire nationalism, but the resistance flag had a white star. These were combined into the current flag. Afghanistan. A tricolor based on Germany's, actually, with a coat of arms in the middle. And finally, Mauritania. And yeah, it's just Islamic symbolism again. Nothing too special. But extra, you forgot to talk about the flag of Belize. The flag of what now? Ahaha, <laughs> yeah, that flag sucks. I am laughing at my own joke. You will make me win the war in the alternate history? Wow, how meta. I haven't even made the alternate history yet. I'm not signing that. If you win the war, then it takes away all of the suspense. Uh. Yeah, fine, I'll sign it, but under the condition that you also let EBM go. So I'm just gonna leave them here forever if I sign this? You seem a lot more untrustworthy to me than they do. Your existence itself will cause a lot of problems in the timeline.
You couldn't think of any other way to get me out of there. What happened? How many Deus Ex Machinas do you think we can put in this video? Say, do you think there's any rubber around here? Perfect, gimme! Well, I'm the one drawing the image, so as long as I've got a makeshift eraser, I can just get rid of the drawing. Simple. Sure thing. Well, I don't have a pencil. I can only take from the images in my folders. Yeah, whatever, shut up. Hey hey, if you're still here, thanks, I appreciate that. You can subscribe if you'd like. Usually I would tell you what the next video will be about, but I'm gonna keep it a secret this time. You'll see why eventually. Also, gotta get this out of the way. If there's anything that I missed or got wrong about any of these flags, please do let me know. With 200 flags, I'm bound to have missed something, so I'll probably make a pinned comment addressing any mistakes. And another thing, this is more so for the more extra and exile fans instead of the general audience. I've been pretty quiet about who Green Horde actually is, but that changes now. You might remember us talking about an alternate history, and that's because I would like to branch out this channel into multiple topics, and I've always wanted to make mapping videos as well, so I'm gonna make an alternate history. If you want more info on that, then I'm gonna post about it tomorrow on my community tab, so you can go check it out if you want. And that's all I have to say. Alright, see ya!